We're all very excited about the use of targeted therapies for the mutations that are present in AML. But as you can understand, you'll be then just targeting a subset of patients, and even in an individual patient, that mutation, that target may only be in a subset of the cells and may not actually even be a driver of the disease. And so I think there are, quite, you know, there are limitations, a priori limitations of targeted therapies in cancer in general, but specifically in AML. And so I think the value of targeted therapies is going to come with, um, in addition to other treatments that can more broadly treat the disease. Um, so chemotherapy is still um, an option for, for these um, patients, um, but also drugs being developed to target the um, apoptosis and induced apoptosis um, are going to be very important in the, in the future. In terms of chemotherapy, a apparently safer way of giving systemic chemotherapy is if you could direct the chemotherapy directly to the leukemia cell and spare normal cells. And that's the premise behind antibody um, drug conjugates in, in cancer, but specifically in AML. Uh, we have gemtuzumab azogamycin as a proof of principle that um, an antibody drug conjugate may actually improve outcomes in patients with, um, with leukemia. Um, other drugs have been developed and are still being developed that target CD33 and a number of other um, cell surface molecules in AML. One such example is vadastuximab tallerine. Um, this drug is an anti-CD33 um, uh, antibody. It's a humanized murine monoclonal antibody. It's covalently linked to a payload, which is a dimer of pyrolo um, benzodiazepine which is basically a DNA intercalating drug that causes double-stranded um, DNA um, breaks um, and apoptosis. Um, the um, uh, payload is not a substrate for multidrug resistance proteins. The linker is very stable um, in, in the plasma, and so it may have some potential advantages over gemtuzumab azogamycin. And so it's been studied in phase one and phase one B studies. Um, we have completed dose escalation with hypomethylating agents, and Amir Fati is leading a publication of that, um, but also with intensive chemotherapy, seven and three induction chemotherapy with um, vadastuximab tallerine. Um, the response rates we saw were um, uh, very encouraging, including MRD negative CRs. The toxicity that we have to deal with with this drug, though, is myelosuppression. We did not see in the initial studies of this drug significant um, or we did not see um, veno-occlusive disease outside of patients who uh, then went on to a transplant. So from the drug itself, we didn't see it. So hepatic toxicity was not important. However, um, the development of that drug has been halted. And it's been halted based on a phase three study called the Cascade trial where older, less fit, or unfit patients were randomly selected to get azacitidine or azacitidine with one dose of vadastuximab tallerine, which, as I mentioned, is myelosuppressive. The study had to be halted because of an imbalance in the number of deaths um, in the experimental arm with vadastuximab due to infection. So it appears that because of the myelosuppression, a higher risk of infectious uh, deaths. Um, this drug is active. Many investigators are hoping that we can bring it back and continue development, maybe look a little bit more closely at the dose, but I think what's happened with vadastuximab really points out the importance of when we do these trials in older, less fit patients to still keep in mind that they have to be very aggressively supported during their periods of cytopenias.